Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, as per your time zones, your region, wherever across the world you are watching this video. So, guys, in the previous uh, class or previous video, we have seen how to install Linux, especially Red Hat or CentOS or any other familiar Red Hat related operating system. Now, today I'm going to show you the first part in this series where we are going to learn the command lines that how we have to use uh, Linux in the command line. So here I have logged in into my uh, Linux operating system. This is how when you connect through command line, it is going to look like. So first we are going to understand few of the basic commands. The idea to view this particular thing or in this webinar is to learn all these topics, creating, copying, moving, deleting files, VI editor, symbolic link, regular expression, filter commands, input output redirectors, find command, file permissions, all those things step by step we are going to view. Now, moving forward, the first command, what I wanted to show you that how you can find out what is the date and time going on in the system. So in Unix or Linux, you can use a command date, which will tell you what is the date and time going on in the system. Same way, you can run cal command to view the calendar, which will display current month calendar. Let us say you wanted to view complete year's calendar. Then you can say cal 2022. So this is going to show you 2022 calendar. In fact, if you wanted to view uh, next year's calendar, see as you see on the screen, there is lots of data appeared on the screen. Now I would like to clear the screen. To clear the screen, you can use clear command and hit enter. If you don't want it to use the command, there is a shortcut to clear the screen, which is Control plus L. Whenever you press Control plus L, it is going to clear the screen. So suppose I'll want to see 2023 calendar. So when I say Cal 2023, it is going to display 2023's calendar. So you can view one year ahead, you can view many years back, many years forward, any year's calendar you want, you can view by using cal command. Now, the next command, what we are going to work on is who am I? See, who am I will allow you to know with which user you have logged in to the system. See, I have logged in as a root user. So whenever you log in as some user, you will be landing into that user's home directory. Now, if you want to check in which directory you are, you can use one more command called PWD. PWD stands for print working directory. People call it present working directory also, it's fine. You can call it present working directory also, but actually it is print working directory. When I hit enter, it shows you that you are in the home directory of root. See, whenever a user login into the system, suppose I have a user, my user, and if I log in as my user, you see who am I? I'm my user. And if you check PWD, it tells you that you are in the home directory of that user. So whenever you log in as some user, automatically you will be landing into that user's home directory, right? Every user will have a home directory and we will be landing into that user's home directory. Now, inside this directory, if you wanted to view what is the content, Maybe I wanted to view how many files are there inside it, how many directories are there inside it, whatever the things are there, I want to check the content of this directory. To view the content of this directory, you can say ls. When you run ls, it is going to display all the files, all the directories, whatever is present inside it. Now guys, how could you know 
which one is a file and which one is a directory right now here we may have little confusions to clear that confusion there is some beautiful color coding that is used by linux the objects that are appearing in black color these are files something which is appearing in blue color these are directories so color coding is used very nicely in linux environment which will help us to know which one is file and which one is directory but guys there are few linuxes who never ever uses color coding right in fact if you go for ibm aix ibm aix is a unix which never use any color coding everything will be appeared in black color or white color then what would i deduce from that shall i think that everything is a file no see in that case you can view ls space hyphen l see every command has some arguments so you can run ls followed by the options or arguments so ls hyphen l will show you the file output in detail when i hit enter it displays the detail about the file now here how can i know which one is file and which one is directory without color coding so you see if the object is starting with a hyphen or if it is starting with a dash that means it's a normal file if the object is starting with letter d that means it is a directory like that there are so many other files also which is available if the object start with dash it's a normal file if it is starting with a d it's a directory if it is starting with l it's a link file shortcut file if it is starting with b it's a block special file like hard disk floppy disk etc and c represents character special file like keyboard mouse monitor and all see linux stores everything in the form of file for us it might be hard drive but for linux it's a block special file for us it might be keyboard mouse monitor for it it is a character special file so linux uses or stores everything in the form of file anyway now let us say that i don't want it to view all the files detail maybe out of all there is a file git file i only want to see the detail about git file so how can i view the detail about only one file you can say ls hyphen l followed by the file name when you run this command it displays individual file detail maybe i am not interested to see file details i wanted to view directory details basically what's a directory guys the directory is collection of objects whenever you wanted to organizedly or segregatively want to keep the data then we create a folder or a directory some people call it folder some people call it directory in our case we are going to call it directory so we make different directories to organize your data like i have audio songs so i'll create one directory and keep those into them suppose i am having some uh, video files so i'll keep another folder with the name video where i'll store all the videos documents so many folders you can create so here the blue color one are your directory suppose i am interested to see the detail only about my dir how can i view the details about a specific directory to view the details about a directory i'll go with the command ls hyphen ld followed by the directory name so this is going to show me the details about the directory like what directory i have and its detail so if it is a file ls hyphen l and the file name ls hyphen ld and the directory name if you use ls hyphen l on a directory instead of showing you 
what is the details of the directory it will start showing you the contents present inside the directory so ls hyphen l on a file will give you file details ls hyphen l on the directory will display the contents available inside the directory if you are not interested to view content you can say ls hyphen ld and the directory name this is going to display the properties of the directory so normally the first thing in the object is the type of file then the file access permission who can access this file in which mode that details you can check then this number seven what you see here on a directory is the contents available inside it and on a file the same thing represents how many links or the shortcuts available for that file then the first name mentioned here is the username or owner name or creator name the one who creates the file will be called as the owner of the file so who owns this file root user and the second name what is available over here is a group name so here it is telling you which group owns it see every file will be owned by a user or a group so here it is telling you which user is owning it and which group is owning it then what is the size of the file in bytes and you can go for uh, the date and time when it was created followed by the name so these are the details what we can view about a file when we say ls hyphen l list the output in long form okay now moving forward i would like to learn how to create files in unix or linux platform see to create a file or to view the content of the file or to override the file or to add the content to the file we use one command called cat command cat stands for concatenate by using cat command you can create files you can override files you can add data to file or even you can uh, view the contents of the file so let me show you how to use this cat command see if there is an existing file like i have git file if i want to view what is inside it i can say cat space and the file name this is going to show you what is present in that file or you can say cat my file this will show you what is there inside this file now let us say i don't want it to view the file and other details i wanted to create a new file how can I create a new file? To create a new file, you can say cat space. After every command, you have to give a space to continue with the option. Greater than symbol. That means you are asking cat command to put a data in some file. What is the file you wanted to create? For example, I wanted to create a file with the name called uh, test file. Now you see there will be a new file created with this name test file. Now beware if that name file already exists. You see in your previous output there was no such file with the name test file. If already there is a file with that name, it will get overwritten. So please be careful that you are not mentioning the file which is already there. Otherwise, all the data inside that file will be overwritten without even intimating you that is the problem with cat command it won't intimate you but it simply overwrite the content so when i hit enter you see i'm going to continue by typing something i'll say hello world this is my new file now once you have finished typing if you wanted to save the file then you have to press ctrl d you can also press ctrl c or ctrl d both will work so i'm going to press ctrl d and it will bring you out of the file now if you do ls you see there is a file available with the name test file 
If you read what is inside it, you will actually find out that it contains some data. So this is the way you can use cat command for creating the file. Now, I wanted to overwrite the file. Maybe I don't like the content, so I wanted to change the content. I want to overwrite the file. So repeat the same command again, cat greater than the file. See, when you run cat greater on an existing file, it will simply overwrite the content without even telling you, without even intimating you, it is going to overwrite the file. The moment I hit enter, and you see, I'm going to type something over here. I'm going to say, Linux is read, and git Gotham Digital is the best place for learning IT, right? Let me save it, Control D. Now, previously, if you see, I had the data, hello world, this is my new file. Now, if I read the file, the old data will be overwritten and new data will be added. So this is what happens whenever you will uh, write the data on an existing file. Okay, so this is how it is going to overwrite the content of your existing file. Now, moving forward, let us say I don't want it to overwrite the file. I want to keep the previous data and I wanted to add some new data into existing one. So, how can I add new data into existing one? See, in order to append the data, we call it appending. To append the data in existing file, you have to use cat double greater. Single greater will overwrite the existing file, where double greater will add data to existing file. So I'll say cat double greater and test file. When I hit enter and add the data, for example, I'm going to say that uh, this is the video tutorial for Linux. Now when I press Control D, and if you read the content of the file, see previously we used to have three lines, and now we are having five lines. So what happened? We have appended the data to the existing file. Previous data is maintained as it is, and new data has been added. So this is the way how we can uh, create a file and we can append the data or even overwrite the file. Now let us say I wanted to create some blank files, empty files. Actually, there is no proper usage of empty files, but sometimes when you just wanted to show that you have some data and later on you wanted to add something into it, you can create some empty files and reserve those names and later on you can add more data to it. To add empty files, we can go with a command, touch command. Now touch is very safe command to work with. With touch command, you can create an empty file and later on you can use for adding data into it. For example, you can say touch and file one. Now if you check out, there is file one created. Check the properties of file one, you will find that it's an empty file, zero byte file, which does not have anything inside it. Okay, now next thing is, I want to create the same way multiple files. One file is not enough for me. I wanted to add two, three, four, or five files maybe. So to add multiple files with touch command, you can say touch, file two, file three, file four. So you see four files or three files will be created. File one, file two, file three, file four, like that. So this is the way how we can create multiple empty files. As of now, it does not have anything. Any file you want to add the data, you can say cat greater than and add the data into it. All right, now let's move forward and see what's next. See the next command, what we are going to learn is how to create a directory. As I explained you, 
directory is collection of objects which is also called as folder whenever you want to organize your data we create a directory and we keep some important stuff into it whatever is needed like you can create a directory for audio you can create a directory for video you can create a directory for softwares you can create a directory for downloads so many segregative work we can do by creating directories to create a directory we have a command mkdir let's see how to use it to create a directory i'm going to go with a command mkdir and i'll use uh, some name see mkdir command is very nice command if you say mkdir an existing directory name it will stop you and it is going to tell you that you cannot use this directory why because that name is already taken so in that case i have to use some other name let me use some other name and create a directory so in that case i'll say mkdir new dir now if you do ls you see there is new dir it is created now the directory is created but I wanted to step into that directory. I want to go inside that directory and I want to view what is inside it or I want to create some more data into it. To change the directory and enter into the directory, you can go with the command cd followed by the directory name. Observe here, there is a tilt symbol is appearing. The moment you say CD and the directory name, it is going to change that location and it says that you are now in new DIR. If you say LS, you'll find nothing because it's an empty directory. We haven't added anything into it. The moment you add the data, this data will now be stored in this directory. Now, just we have seen touch command. Using the same touch command, guys, I would like to create some five files or eight files like that. So I can say touch. Now you can say file one, file two, file three, like that. Or if you have the same name and the suffix you want to change with numbers, I don't want it to use the name just file. I want to call it file one, file two, file three. So I have a suffix. So when you have a suffix in number, very beautifully you can give range. You can use the curly braces and inside it you can say from which number to start and which number to end. Suppose I want it to start from number uh, one and I want it to go till number seven. So it is going to create seven files with the name file one, file two, file three, up to seven. When I hit enter, do ls, and you see seven files are created. Guys, in place of seven, if I give 70, then 70 files it is going to create. 700 files, 7,000 files, 700,000 files it is going to create like that. 70,000, 700,000, any number of files you want, you can create. It would be a very big number to go with like that. So using this range is a really beautiful concept. Now, same like this, if you want to create multiple directories, then you can use MKDIR and the directory name followed by numbers. Maybe I want to go from one to five. So in this case, it is going to create multiple directories for you. So these shortcuts are really handy and it is going to really help us to create directories and files, any number in a very short time. Now my work is over and I want to come back to previous directory. To leave the directory, you can use cd dot dot. So when I press cd space dot dot, it is going to take you one step back, right? And you are back to slash root. See, earlier it was displaying that I am in new DIR. Now it says I am in slash root or your home directory. So this is the way you can create a directory. You can go inside the directory or you can leave out the directory and come out, right? Now, guys, I wanted to make it more interesting. See, I wanted to create a parent directory 
and a child directory in the same time. My requirement is I wanted to create one parent directory and inside it I want to add a child directory. How to do that? You can say mkdir hyphen p. Now when you say hyphen p, you're asking it to create a parent directory first. So I'll say mkdir create a parent directory with the name called um, main directory for example now inside main directory i wanted to create a subdirectory so i'm asking mkdir to create a parent directory and inside that parent directory create a child directory now when i hit enter do ls you see main directory is available look what is inside main directory you'll find there is a subdirectory also created inside it so this is the way you can create a main directory and you can create a subdirectory inside it now let us say i wanted to create one parent directory and three child directories is it possible yes you can say mkdir hyphen p make the parent directory with a name for example zoo in zoo i want three directories to be created so you have to use a curly braces and you can mention the subdirectories like i want lion i want tiger and i want cheetah right three directories i want to create under the main directory so first it is going to create the zoo directory and inside zoo directory it is going to create cheetah lion and tiger same way you can create more complex uh, structure like you can create the parent directory with the name world each parent directory should have three subdirectory and each subdirectory should have another two to set up directories. So how to achieve this scenario? I want world inside it, India, Australia, USA. In India, two directories. In USA, two directories. And in Australia, two directories. To achieve this content, we have to use the command like this. I'll say mkdir. First, you create the parent directory with the name called world. Inside world, I want three subdirectories. One is India, comma, other one is USA, and the other one is Australia. Now, it's not yet done here. I want in India two directories, in USA two directories, and in Australia two directories. So, in that case, I'll come to India and I'll give a slash. In India, I want two directories, Hyderabad and Bangalore. In USA, I want two directories, maybe uh, New York and New Jersey. And in Australia, I again need two directories, maybe Sydney and Melbourne. So this is going to create a parent directory called world with three child directories, India, USA and Australia, wherein India will have two subdirectories, USA will have two subdirectories, and Australia will have two subdirectories. So this is the way how we can achieve this scenario as well. When I hit enter, now if you do ls, you see there is a world directory. If you go into world directory, where am I? I am right now in world directory. Do ls. In world, I have Australia, India, USA. Just check LS Australia, LS India, and LS USA. And you see, it is going to display the thing for you. Now, let us say I'll come out of this directory. See, there is one more shortcut to leave the directory. It doesn't matter where you are. If you just run CD command, it will pick you up and throw you into your home directory. So it doesn't really matter where you are. The moment you run CD, it is going to take you and send you into your home directory. So you are in slash root now. 
Now, if you wanted to view the whole content in one output, you can say LS hyphen capital R, where R stands for recursive. So recursive will display everything what is present in world directory. So it says in world there are three directories. In Australia, there are two directories. Melbourne and Sydney are empty. In India, there are two directories. Bangalore and Hyderabad, both are empty. Same way you have USA with two directories and both of them are empty. So this is the way you can view from top to bottom everything. Right, fine. Now, let us learn how we can use one more concept called copying the data. See, sometimes we want to copy the files from one location to other location. Like in Windows or in your graphical environment, you use Control C and Control V to create a copy and paste it. As we are learning everything on command line, so we are going to use CP command to do that activity. So I'm going to say CP source and destination. For example, I have a file here called uh, git file. I want to make a copy of it and I want to put it into main directory. If I say ls main, you see there is no such file with the name called main. When I say cp, copy which file? git file and paste it where? In main directory. When I hit enter, you see original file will be as it is. It is not going to get disturbed. A copy of it will be created and pasted in main directory. Like that, you can copy multiple files also. For example, you want to copy three files. So you just need to say cp file1, file2, file3 in main directory. So this time, three files will be copied. So this is the way how we can copy a single file or you can copy multiple files. Same way guys, if you want to copy a directory. See directory will have contents inside it. For example, I'll create some empty directory to show you how this thing will be working. So what I did is I have created three directories over here. Let's say, I wanted to move one directory into other directory or I want to copy one directory into other directory. For example, I have new DIR. I want to copy entire new DIR directory into D4, for example. If you check in D4, it's empty. It's having nothing. So I'm going to say CP. I want to copy a directory called new DIR. Where I want to put it in D4. But guys, when you are copying a directory, some extra options you can use, which is very important. Like you can use R, V, F, P, where R is mandatory. Without using R option, you cannot copy a directory. If you are copying a directory, mandatorily, you have to use hyphen R. Others are optional. V, to view the verbose output, what is getting copied. F, to do this task forcefully. P, to preserve the permissions. Now, what are the file permissions? You will understand in the coming classes or coming videos in this series, right? So only one option is very important, that is hyphen R. So let me come back and I'll add hyphen R. So I'm telling copy recursively whatever is there in this directory into D4. When I hit enter, first of all, observe your original directory is as it is. It has not been disturbed. A copy of it has been pasted in D4. So like that, you can copy some files, you can copy some directories and put it into any other directory of your choice, whatever you want to do. Right? Same way, we can also go for moving. See, moving is nothing but cut and paste. 
if you want to move completely a file from its original location to some other place so in that case we will be going with mv command right so when we go with mv command it will totally move out the things from its current location to some other place for example i wanted to move file one to d4 directory so i'll say mv what you want to move file one to which location d4 now first you check the current location earlier there used to be a file file one but now there is no file it has been moved into d4 just check it out in d4 and you will find that file is residing over there the same way you can use mv command to move a directory from its current place to some other place for example i have a main directory now this directory i want to move out in world directory so i have to just use mv move the main directory in world directory so observe here earlier there used to be a main directory but now it is moved into world directory and you can find it over here so this is the way you can use mv command to move the objects from one location to the other location moving forward if you want to rename a file for example i don't like the name of the file or a directory and i want to rename for example i have a file test file maybe i don't like that name and i want to change the name to m1 file or any other name whatever you like to rename a file also we use mv command now guys how is it possible that at one time mv is working as moving and the other time it is working as renaming see here there is a logic what you have to understand what is the logic it uses see the new name what you are using is the logic behind mv to work as rename command for example if i say mv move file 2 to d4 so in this case you see d4 exist so what it does if the destination exists it will move this file into that directory see destination if it is there it is going to move the data from its current position and it put it elsewhere wherever you have asked it but suppose the new name what you are using suppose i have test file it has some data now if i want to rename it i need to say mv which file you are targeting test file now the destination or the new name is the logic for rename the name what you are mentioning must be a new name it should not be an existing name if you use an existing name it will work as moving if you use something new for example xyz file you see in your current location there is no file with the name xyz file so it is going to create that file it is going to rename that file when i hit enter do ls and you see test file is gone and in place of it there is a new file xyz file which contains the same data so this is the way how mv command will work as moving and it will also work as rename so guys in this video i want to stop over here and we will meet back again in the next video where we will continue to work with deleting the stuff and moving ahead thank you very much for joining this video and we'll see you in the next part of the video